All right, welcome everyone. My name is Valerie Lewis and we have the amazing Robin Poole, Robin Wave. Hey. And this is our full moon in Leo celebration. We like to come together and celebrate these lunations. Um, we have new moon and full moon celebrations. And the way we work these uh, gatherings is I give a portion of the event more in tune with beginner or intermediate knowledge and then Aaron oh not Aaron where did that name come from and then Robin what y'all ever have such something so weird just pop into your brain that you know it has meaning but you don't know where it came from I don't know why I just called you Aaron Robin Robin is an astrologer and she gives us a more in-depth look at not only our moon but what else is going on up in the skies that might affect us during the period of the new moon. So I hope that all makes sense. There's a lot of planets and astrological placements that are all happening at the same time as this full moon in Leo that also have effects on what might um, be important to us on a personal and spiritual level. So um, after we both give our presentations, we move into rituals and rituals, I'm doing that in air quotes because rituals are ways that you can pull these energies in to work more personally with them, a way to make these energies more personal. So if you wanna call them a ritual, call them a ritual. Mine is a little, little bit non-ritualistic uh, this time around, but it is going to give you some deeper insights on how you can make these energies more personal to your specific situation. And as always, anytime we cover rituals, we want you to make these personal. These are not textbook. You get graded off if you don't pick one of the items that we list. It's very much about use what you have, use what feels good for you, let your intuition guide you, and use these rituals or anything that we present as a basis um, for building your own. Switch out what you need to switch out and build your own. All right, so with all of that being said, we are going to move right into no, we're not going to move right into the presentation. We're going to let Robin, who's not Aaron, ground us and get us all centered and get all of our energies focused for this event. Go ahead, Robin. So as soon as you called me Aaron, I looked up the meaning of the name Aaron because I thought maybe there's a message in it. There are various meanings for the name Aaron, but one of them was peace. And I'm like, oh, I need that. Have you guys ever been in that situation? I call it, I call it um, like... Um, nervited where you're like nervous and excited at the same time I feel like I'm all jittery so I think I think I need more peace I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be Aaron here for the for the rest of this presentation okay so apropos of that I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes and feel your body wherever you are release any tension that you perceive in your shoulders in your neck or your forehead maybe or anywhere in your body feel your feet on the ground and your backside in the chair or on the bed or the couch wherever you are and i invite you to ground or center yourself however is comfortable for you if you want to center in your own heart if you want to let your energies flow down into the earth like roots coming out of your feet let any of toxins in your body pass away if you wanna release and let your energy flow out horizontally to the ends of the earth or up into the stars or into any local trees or, or landmarks, the rocks, whatever, whatever is good for you to just relax and let your energy start flowing more naturally. And you can envision a basket at your feet that place any worries that you have about what you're doing later today or who's gonna win the Super Bowl or your to-do list. And if you wanna pick them back up after this is over, you can, but just for now, let's be here and thinking about the messages that spirit has for us and how our own higher self can guide us. And really tapping into these energies of divine love to help us create whatever transformation, whatever our next steps are. And I'd like to set a couple of intentions. You can set your own or you can join me in these that we'll all come away with this, come away from this with whatever is important for our growth, for our highest good. We won't worry about messages for other people or what somebody else would say or, or trying to absorb everything from this event. 
but that we can use our discretion and discernment to understand what is, what is the one or maybe two things that we are really taking away. And that we're in a safe place where we can ask questions and share about what's going on with us. And, uh, and then when we leave, we'll, we'll take away what, what energies are helpful for our growth and our development and our highest good. But we won't have any sort of cores. We won't be carrying anybody else's emotion in a way that's not good for us. It's safe to connect while we're here. And then we will detach and go our separate ways in a, in a healthy manner at the end. And I'd like to thank spirit and any positive energies that are around us to help us have a great time and celebrate the moon and, and be thinking about our, ourselves and our growth and maybe any messages for loved ones that come to us while we're here that we want to convey to them in a loving way. And I'd like to ask for a nice bubble of protection for any negative energies that might be here, but also to know that we are powerful creators and we can kick out any negative energies or unhelpful voices or anything that isn't really divine love and, and growth and understanding for our highest good. And I wanna thank Valerie as always for running this event and doing all the scheduling and thanks to everybody who took the time on Super Bowl Sunday to come and be here. So we'll just take another couple deep breaths. Ground ourselves in this beautiful moment, knowing that this earth is a safe and beautiful place for us to be. And that it's good that we're taking time to think about these matters amidst our day. Let any excess tension just fall away. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and rejoin us. And we'll start again. And Valerie will give us our tarot, unicorns, and coffee guidelines. <laughs> Thank you so much, Robin. Only two guidelines here. The first one is love and light. Always hold yourself in love and light and please hold everyone else in attendance and that beautiful divine love and light also. And the second guideline, don't start no shit, won't be no shit. Please behave as an adult. Be aware and conscious of how you are behaving and interacting with others as well. All right. Thank you, everyone. Just a moment here. As I adjust some things. Perfect. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get right into my presentation. Make sure I have it pulled up here. Just a moment, please. Mm -hmm. There we go. Awesome. That's a super cool font, Valerie. Thank you. All right. Can everyone see the screen? Are we doing good? Okay. I'm using a different presentation. Um, so I want to make sure it's behaving properly. There it says now y'all can see. So full moon and Leo. Um, I'm going to do this, my presentation just a little bit differently, and you'll see when I get into it, so I'm not going to waste too much time talking about it. Full Moon in Leo presentation. This is taking up a lot of bandwidth. So first, we're going to talk about the full moon, and I want to talk about it in terms of the phases of the moon, which we don't always discuss piece by piece. So if you can see where I've highlighted, highlighted it, so the full moon assuming that we are celebrating, or it's not actually today, you all know that, we did this a little bit earlier. Um, the full moon is when things have manifested. And then immediately following the full moon, we go into this um, waning. I rearranged it and I forgot to rearrange the, the wording. We go into this waning phase. So right after the, the full moon, the energy that we're going to shift into is asking us, to look within, to review the past cycle, the, the past cycle from the new moon to the full moon, to review that, and then to release and let go of what no longer serves us. So from this period, from the full moon back around to the new moon, we're looking within, we're reviewing ourselves, and we're letting go and releasing of what does not serve us. Self-kindness is in there as well. 
Now, because we are leading up to the full moon, I do just want to mention in the few days that we have between today's event and the actual full moon, this will be in this period, in this area over here in the upper left-hand corner where we wanna be mindful. We wanna give more focus once again to our intentions to what we are trying to manifest. And we wanna let those manifestations come to their um, fullest reach, their fullest manifestation. Uh, the full moon is when things manifest for us. It's when the, the moon's energy is shining the brightest on our light, the most illuminating period, and the period when our manifestations are, are full grown, so to speak. Um, but I would like to focus on, because that is going to happen between now and the full moon, I wanna focus on the period that happens between the full moon and the new moon, because that's the period looking forward that we're all going to shift through. So the looking within, reviewing, and then letting go is the portion that I would like to focus on. So that's about the moon. Now let's talk about Leo, went the wrong way there. Leo, some characteristics of Leo. Proud, that is in bold. They are proud, they are lions. Bold, confident, warm, loving. They are natural born leaders. They are charismatic, excellent speakers and prone to be dramatic. When you think about Leos, these can all be positive aspects as long as they do not fall into excess. So being overconfident might come off as arrogance or being a braggart, but being confident in and of itself is an excellent Leo trait. So anything that would be um, an over-exaggeration of these traits would be a negative aspect for a Leo. Um, being overly dramatic, where everything just has to be cataclysmic in your life. We don't want to get into the over, over, mm -hmm, just lost the word, but y'all know what I mean. So we wanna stay with the positive aspect by keeping all of these very, very strong and dominant and masculine, I will call them masculine in the sense of divine masculine, um, all of these traits in check and in balance so that they can positively affect our life. So that's a little bit about Leo energy. So we talked about the moon phase, Leo energy. And now, I don't know why it keeps going backwards. And now we're going to talk about something else that is going on in the sky. And I'm doing these three separately for a reason. So there's also in the sky right now, a Jupiter sextile Uranus alignment. And what this means for us, this Jupiter sextile Uranus could mean breakthroughs and understanding the meaning of life. Don't we all need some of that? Breaking through to more joy, exuberance, euphoria, and celebration. Expanding into your authentic self, human and divine, your human and divine self. Breaking out of ruts to live more fully. So Jupiter energy is expansive energy. It's very good um, feeling energy, very loving energy. Uranus energy is the energy of change, sometimes chaotic, but it's the, the, the change agent. Um, so you put these two together and we have positive changes taking place. Now, Jupiter is also currently or will be in Pisces in the sign of Pisces, Jupiter, together with that Piscean energy um, could help with spiritual breakthroughs, expanded creative inspiration, more flow state in your daily life and personal breakthroughs and in dreams, including conscious streaming and dream interpretation. I do wanna let you know that most of this information was um, researched and pulled in from a website that I visited, just so you don't uh, accuse me of plagiarism. I'm gonna tell y'all right away, I got a lot of this information from a very insightful website and I would try to grab that link and place it in the text for you later. Um, but the overall thing that I want you to understand with Jupiter sextile Uranus, Uranus alignment that is happening right now, if you had a tumultuous January, like we kind of talked about during our last couple of events or even just a tumultuous year, this is very good news. If you choose to align with and work with these energies, 
It can give you that feeling of breaking through, of getting out of that rut, of moving away from that stuck feeling, feeling more in touch with your spirituality, feeling that you're getting more insights, um, just feeling more alive, more in flow. So all of those very good things come from this alignment. And so now, let's see if we can go forward and not backward. Nope, we went backwards. It's okay, Valerie. We can all relate to the new. I'm, no, the new, I don't know what's new technology. There must be some something I'm not clicking right. Let's I'm see. really digging the animation. Oh, I get it. There we go. I figured it out. <laughs> okay. okay, so let's put it all together. The full moon in Leo, also with this Uranus and Jupiter sextile alignment. All of these energies that I'm going to speak about, there's a lot more going on that Robin's going to talk about, but all of these energies that I'm going to talk about, if we put them all together, let's start with the fact that it's a full moon and that we're going into that period, that waning phase where we're going to review and let go. What should we let go of, Valerie? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. So the first thing we want to do is look for areas in our life where Leo tendencies might have a negative aspect. And we talked about that before. It's when you are overly any of those things when there's a, um, I'm just gonna leave it at that. So are we overly confident or overly dramatic? These are questions you can ask yourself as you review your life or just review this past month as we move into this Leo energy. Could you benefit from more humility? Are there any areas where your ego, because Leos are very egoic and ego is not a bad thing when used in balance, but are there any areas of your life where your ego is working at detriment and you need to let go of overly egoic actions? Or conversely, we talked about the over, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Over-exaggerated. We've talked about over-exaggerated qualities of a Leo and how they can work against you. But perhaps you're someone who has not tapped into those Leo energies at all. Maybe you're timid and, and afraid of certain things. So as you review your life, maybe you can ask yourself, am I too timid? Is it time for me to use this period to step into my Leo power to be more bold, more charismatic? Is it time for me to step up as a leader? When I think of Leo, Leo, and when I think of stepping into Leo power, I always think of the Lion King. And I think of Simba chilling with his friends, Pumbaa and Timon, and he's just, he doesn't want to be king. He wants to chill. He wants to sing songs. He wants to eat bugs. He doesn't want to be king. But he has that moment where he needs to step into that Leo power, where he does need to be the leader because people need his presence. And he does need to realize his true power and his ancestry. Y'all know the movie. Um, so when I think about stepping into Leo power, I always picture that scene, that transition where he has decided to step into that role and, and really embody that, that Leo energy. Um, so you could, as you review, you could be someone who is um, having over your, why do I keep losing the word? You could be someone who has these Leo qualities, but they're over, um, I cannot think of the word, overly abundant is not the word. Um, you mean like- in ex excess, in excess, yeah, yeah. So you could be someone who has embodied these Leo things, but they're in excess and they're out of balance. Or you could be someone who hasn't quite embodied them and you need to step into that power. Either way, this is a time for you to review and for you to personally look at where am I at on the Leo spectrum? So that's what the new, the full moon is asking you to do to review this and figure out what you need to let go of. Do I need to let go of some overly excessive tendencies or do I need to let go of this feeling that I am not a Leo? Do I need to let go of those ideas and really step into it? And then putting it all together, we're going to add in the Uranus energies. Uranus is all about evolution and change. So you can use, these plan use this planet's energy to help you change into a more balanced version of Leo energy, whatever that may be for you individually. 
And that, I do believe, is the end of my presentation, but I found this graphic of a unicorn in space with planets, and I just had to put it up there. So I'm just gonna let that sit there for a minute so y'all can marvel at the awe of this beautiful spectacle. All right. That's all I have for my portion of the presentation. I'm going to, oh, I'm gonna wait and see if we have any, cause I could not see the chat while I was talking, see if we have any questions. What Which are the is, dates of the sextile? Right, and I, I looked that up. It's uh, the window is February 13th, 22nd. So right. day and then the next nine days, that's the, the technical window. But honestly, I feel like, you know, the, from an astrology standpoint, that's, that's, the, that's the hot spot, I guess we would say. But you can definitely see, like, if you're making some changes in the next nine days, you can continue to channel this energy past the 22nd. So don't feel like you have to get all your changes or you have to get all your breakthroughs done in the next nine days. This is the kind of, you know, beginning of it to really get going. And then, and then you'll be able to coast on that energy as long as you, you want it and to make those changes that you, you've identified. And that's an excellent point, Robin. Um, also, when you're working with the moons, whether it's new moon or full moon, um, I like to think of it as a dimmer switch. So let's say you have something going on on the day of the full moon. Does that mean you're just asked out and you can't do anything to bring in those full moon energies? No, it's like a dimmer switch. So as you turn it all the way up to its brightness, there's that, there's that moment right before the full moon where you still have, you can still see everything in the room. And as you turn it back down, that first little notch as you're turning down and moving away from the full moon, it's still super bright. You can still see everything in the, in the room. You have to turn it down quite a bit before you get to complete darkness. And that's kind of the way all of the planets work. There's this period right before it's actually in its exact placement where you can still benefit and a period right after where you can still benefit from those energies and pull in those energies, even if they're not at their exact moment or their exact peak. So I like to think of it like a dimmer switch analogy. All right, and with that, got some people hanging out. Sorry, I hope they weren't hanging out that whole time. Um, hopefully they just popped in. Robin, are you able to see? I, I can see, I now can see. I honestly did not have that up. I should have, that was my fault. Welcome to anybody who had to hang out in the waiting room for a Hi. while. Yes. I didn't, I didn't watch it the way I needed to be. I apologize. It's recorded. It's recorded. Okay. I'm going to okay. turn it over to Robin for her portion, portion of the presentation. Okay. All right. Thank you, Valerie. And I loved your new software and I loved the unicorn and I loved all the video thingies, the video elements. Um, I want to mention just something. This is this is kind of a holdover from the way that people used to think about astrology. And we would say things like, oh, I'm a Leo or oh, I'm a Virgo or whatever. And that usually just referred to somebody's sun sign. But everybody has Leo energy. So it's not like, oh, Leos are proud and confident and leaders and have charisma. But I'm not a Leo and therefore I don't have it. Everybody has all 12 astrological energies. You just have more of it if you happen to actually also have some Pluto. So this Leo energy applies to your chart, everybody's chart, whether you self-identify as a Leo or not. And if you don't have any planets in Leo, in fact, you might need this extra because that means that it's a free will conscious choice moment for you to embody those characteristics of boldness and confidence and harnessing your charisma and natural leadership that we talk about today. Um, okay. Um, oh, but there's a question from Misha, which is, where, what was the font and where did you find it? And where did you find that unicorn? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point, heart. <laughs> okay, Valerie replied for those of you who can't see the chat, it's Canva, Canva, all right. Okay, I'm gonna get going here. I've just discovered my neighbor appears to be burning perfuming my, my office with smoke. Okay, let's fix that here. So I am really excited because I am starting a group coaching program, which is something I've wanted to do for a long time. And I've just put the link in the chat because I knew that somebody was going to ask me to drop the link in the middle of my presentation, which I can't do because I'm sharing my screen. Oh, wait, no, I am sharing my screen. Okay. If you guys uh, feel free, um, free event 
there's a, I'm doing, I'm, I'm launching it on March 1st, but I'm going to do a couple of ones for free in the next of weeks so that people can come back it out and see if you guys would like it. And today I'm going to be demoing a few tools. Um, okay. And then Valerie's going to watch the chat for me if there are any questions. Can everybody see the screen? I can't see you guys when I share my screen, but can you guys yes. see this? Yes. yes? We okay, see. good. All right. So February 16th, Leo full moon, and I titled this after looking at the astrology, take action to shine. Um, we have a nice day here, so I don't think I'm going to have any internet problems, but if I freeze for a moment, Valerie will let me know as soon as I come back and then I'll, I'll just repeat whatever I said. So this is a double Leo full moon. And what I mean when I say that is that in the tropical zodiac, it's in Leo, but the tropical zodiac is now... Uh, 24 degrees ahead of where we are in the actual sky. And that's because the tropical zodiac was set about 2000 years ago when astrology was written down, Western astrology was written down. And due to a wobble in the Earth's orbit, we actually lose one degree every 72 years. And so now 2000 years later, we've lost roughly 24 degrees. So the actual moon in the sky is 24 degrees behind the tropical like Western zodiac placement. But every sign is 30 degrees wide. So if your moon is at the end of Leo, you could subtract 24 degrees and have the actual sky placement still be in Leo. And that's what we've got here. So this moon is, has a ton of Leo energy to it. And we're going to talk more about that today. OK, so this is one of the tools that I am going to be using in my group coaching program. It's a, I call it a sweet spot analysis. And it's designed to help you figure out in, in today's case, like your zone of transformation for whatever it is you're trying to change. So I picked today's um, uh, theme of shining your light. That's a Leo theme, letting your light shine. To figure out where is that spot for you where you really have your best energies and your best experience with shining. So you could just take a moment and think a little bit about how you might like to shine your light more brightly. Most of us are shining our light in some places but there may be other places where we don't shine as much. So we've got two axes here. And on the left, you can see I've got low truth and high truth. When I say truth, I mean like your personal truth, right? Like shining as your authentic self. And then on the horizontal axis, I've got low energy and high energy. So if you're hanging out in the low truth and low energy zone, I labeled that as you're hiding your light. Now, you might be hanging out in the low truth, high energy zone, which I labeled putting on a facade. That's where it's like you're putting in energy into shining, but you're not really your authentic self. You're playing a role. You're being what people expect. You're presenting what you think other people are going to want to, um, like what they'll accept or what they want, rather than what's really your truth. Now, some of us are in the high truth, low energy zone, which I labeled enjoying yourself in private. So it's like, you're like, you're letting your light shine, but only for you, right? You're only pursuing what you really care about to yourself. You're not sharing it with others. So you're being authentic, but it's a low energy zone because you don't get other people's positivity, reinforcement, comments, support, and feedback. Now, this has nothing to do with whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. You know, if you're an introverted, then I definitely am. You need a lot of private time. But if you're only enjoying yourself in private, you're stuck in a low energy zone all the time. So the sweet spot here, the high truth and high energy is letting your light shine. And I've labeled this the transformation zone. So you can see that the process of thinking through this analysis really allows you to see like the ways that, that you can be doing something that really isn't, isn't so energetic or isn't so exciting or isn't so honest. And then you can come around and see, all right, where do I really need to be to get the transformation or achieve the impact or have the great relationships that I want to get? And so as part of the group, we're going to be teaching people to do this on whatever your transformation is, if you want better relationships, if you want to enjoy your work, whatever it is. But for today, because we're in Leo, I just want to ask you guys to think for a moment, where do you feel like you are on this grid? And where would you like to be? Now, I've labeled the high energy, high truth zone as, as kind of where I want to be because I'm giving these presentations. I'm trying to let my light shine in public. But you might decide that one of these other zones is actually the right zone for you at the moment as you build to embracing your authenticity. So just think about that for a moment. And then I'm going to 
move on to taking a look at the actual astrology. So I would like to you guys to ask yourself this question. Are you ready to shine? And think a little bit about what it is that might be holding you back. And if you're feeling brave and you want to share that in the chat, I would love to hear just like, what is the first word that comes to mind for you, for what's holding you back? For me, the number one thing is fear. That's my big thing. I got, I was kind of raised to not shine. It's not safe. You can't tell anybody what you think. So I get very afraid when it comes to me to, to think about shine. What's that number one thing that might be holding you back? And if you, if you want to share it in the chat, that would be great. And the reason I'm asking you to do this is that I really want you to start on the transformation of feeling more comfortable shining as your authentic self. And just identifying the obstacle is a great way to start to help your psyche start thinking, okay, maybe maybe some change is possible. Maybe I really could take these moon energies and, and make some, some differences. So you can see I've labeled our, our moon here is at 28 degrees Leo. That's the tropical placement in the zodiac. And then if you went out to the sky and you could actually see the constellation behind the moon, depending on you know, if it was cloudy or whatever, and we subtract 24 degrees, we're at four degrees Leo. And if we blow that up, we can see that this is actually two different portions of the sign of Leo. And the first portion, the tropical one, is this one on the right, and it is in the Deccan that is related to the sign of Aries. That's another fire sign about individuality, and fighting to uh, do things your own way. And it is in the term of Mars. So that's a portion of the sign of Leo that's ruled by the planet Mars. And then if we subtract our 24 degrees, this is the Deccan of Leo itself. And this is the term that is ruled by Jupiter, which is a planet of great abundance. Valerie already mentioned that about Jupiter, about breakthroughs and, and, and understanding and learning. So. These two energies are going to help us figure out really more specifically how we can harness this particular moon. And what I typically find is that the tropical energy often describes what's going on in our inner world. And then the sidereal energy describes what's going on in the outer world, like what is the result in the real world that we're going to experience from the inner world work that we're doing. Does anybody have any questions about this so far? Anything in the chat, Valerie? Uh, no questions. There was a lot of comments when you asked them to look within and a lot of people said um, fear. They identified with that. Yeah, Someone said sure. money. Someone said lack of confidence. Oh, wow. Thank you guys. <clears throat> Thank you guys for putting that in. I really appreciate it. I firmly believe that anything, anytime you type anything into a chat or in a public place, spirit and your psyche are listening. And I think that the actual act, it's almost like a magical thing, you know, an energetic thing of simply typing it in and identifying it really primes you to achieve transformation. So I just want to honor all of you guys who took the plunge and actually wrote something. I really, really appreciate that about you. That's what I tell myself every time I do this class. I'm like, spirit is listening. I'm changing just by doing a class. All right. Okay. So if we take a look at these energies, let's think about how this might affect us. So our inner world We've got a lot of Mars energy. It's the term of Mars and it's the Deccan that's ruled by Aries, which is ruled by Mars. So in your inner world, this is a time to expect that you're gonna have to work. There's gonna be some action you need to take. There are gonna be some obstacles that you're gonna work through, maybe obstacles you've been placing in front of yourself where you're making it hard for yourself by clinging onto the past or there's trauma you need to heal. Expect some struggle to figure out what your authentic light needs to shine. You know, where are you gonna have to push and work? And I picked this picture because I felt very like boldly confident, you know, in this picture. And obviously red is a, a classic Mars color. It's like, expect that you're gonna have to put in some effort, work up a sweat, put yourself out there. And you might feel that fear coming up. I've been dealing with fear like you guys would not believe <laughs> the past couple of days. Yeah. So, so expect that it's gonna be a challenge on the inside to shining your light. But the good news, is that our outer results are ruled here by Jupiter in Leo, which is a really great, like powerful, abundant, fun energy. So as you work through those inner obstacles, whatever they might be, you really have the opportunity here to supercharge your shine. So I picked this picture because this is like, you know, the, the high heeled boots and the guitar and the faux snow leopard uh, jacket. By the way, all of the clothes in here come from uh, Goodwill. 
or thrift stores in these in these pictures. But yeah, this is you're really going to be able because of all the hard work that you put in in your inner world. I think you're going to see amazing outer results from this. So I just want you to take a moment and you can close your eyes if you need to and think, what is that first word that comes to mind for the outer result you'd like to see? Would you like to feel confident? Would you like to see more, more subscribers on your social media? Would you like to feel like appreciated at work? Would you like to feel more relaxed? That was a big one for me. I'm like, I just would like to not feel so afraid. I want more relaxation. And again, if you wanna, if you wanna put spirit on notice for the change you're looking for, feel free to share that in the chat. What's that one word that occurs to you? What would it be like for you? if you could work through those obstacles and supercharge that shine. How would your life be different? What would you like to see? Look within and think, if I could supercharge my own light, shine more brightly. And you might decide you wanna pick any of those, those adjectives Val had. You know, I would be bold, I would be confident, I would have more leadership, I would trust my own charisma. Spirit's really been working with me to learn to trust myself, and, and that might be big for you. All right, so what does this mean for you specifically, you sitting out there? So I decided I would do, this is the sun sign horoscope. So if your sun is in Leo, if your sun is in Aries, if your sun is in Taurus, the sun sign horoscope for how you can shine in the next two weeks. And I picked two weeks because we're gonna be having another moon event in two weeks and I'll do another horoscope. But obviously this, with your light shining, this could go on for the rest of the year or for the rest of your life if you want. But this particular moon, here's how it's hitting you. If you have an Aries sun, it is time to explore your creativity in the physical world. Make something, sing something, bake something, create an actual object that you can then give birth to in the physical world. If you have a Taurus sun, you should shine your light one-on-one -on -one with family and friends. And this has to do with where, this is what I do is I make a solar chart for you and this is where the moon is hitting you in your chart. So get together with people online or in person and just believe that they need your light. Whatever you have to shine is what your family and friends need right now. If you have a Gemini sun, it is time to talk up your charismatic inner self. A lot of times we wanna hide our inner selves but the sweet spot is to communicate about who we are on the inside. So if you've got a Gemini sun, this is especially highlighting who you are on the inside and believing that that's appealing and charismatic and valuable for others. If you have a cancer son, find people to hang out with in person or online and share your brilliance. So cancer sons, your light is really highlighted here in groups, groups of people. There's a group out there that needs your son, your light right now. If you have a Leo son, of course, and this, the, the moon is now in Leo. It's all you, babe. Don't hold back on what you wanna create and share with everyone. This is a time to really define your path and think about what's important to you to create and honestly, just share it with anyone you want to. Virgo son, that's me. Go inside and learn to enjoy who you deeply are. This was challenging because people with Virgo sons are often very self-critical, but you gotta look in your deep inner world and heal or grow or accept or nurture whoever you are on the inside. If you have a Libra son, it's time to heal other people's shadows by sharing your deep truth. Share those things that maybe don't seem so attractive. Libras often all wanna look attractive. They wanna be organized. They wanna have it all together. But this is the time to dig into that stuff that maybe doesn't seem so pretty and heal by being honest and courageous about what that is. If you have a Scorpio sun, creativity will supercharge your career as you impress key people. So take your creativity, take your light, take your charisma to work for sure and figure out who those decision makers are, who you could impress and they could be like, man, this person is the perfect candidate for the next project. Or man, so-and-so should be up for a promotion. So don't hide from the important, like powerful people in your career. Sagittarius Sun, explore new territory daily to help you shine brighter. This is a time to get into a new daily routine, switch up what you normally do, take a class, learn something that you can put into practice every day. Capricorn Sun, Time to heal your deep inner self through creative play. Capricorns often want things to be all these, like there has to be a return on your investment. It has to make sense. It has to, to do for the long term. But Capricorn Sun, really just pull up your, your playful self, your deep inner playful self here. Aquarius, 
Enjoy supercharged charisma in your relationships and look outside of yourself. Aquarius sons often have a lot of energy for what they think is important, but for you, your one-on-one -on -one relationships, being a good listener and empowering others are really highlighted right now. And if you have a Pisces sun, a question for you is how fun is your daily routine? Highlight creative communication every day. So if you've got a Pisces sun, it's time to talk. Don't just get inward and be all in yourself. And then, and then really punch up the fun level in what you're doing on a daily basis. Don't get dragged down by all the minutia or the to-do list or anything like that. Does anybody have any question here that they wanna ask about this for their son? If you're, if you're not sure what this means for you, just write it down, make a note, or you can email me. I'll give you my email at the end. You can email me and I'll send you a copy of this. I gotta say that last, last uh, full moon's horoscope really, really was what my two weeks was like. So I'm kind of like, all right, I've got to go inside and learn to enjoy who I am. Any, any questions, Val? I am not seeing any questions about the chart or um, misunderstandings, but I am seeing a lot of comments and a lot of people enjoy the chart. Oh, good. Did people say that things that, how it would help them for, for supercharging their light? Um, I do have a question actually, uh, oh. we, which, which system do you use? Um, I normally use the tropical system when I work with people, unless they ask me a question about why is this happening to me now? So if people are asking me a question about the real world or they're not getting results in the real world, I sometimes will do a sidereal reading also. But if people are wanting to know about themselves, like their spiritual gifts, or they want to know what they can do to thrive at work, I usually use the tropical system. I'm honestly the only astrologer I know who uses both. Almost, almost all astrologers just use one or the other, but I don't like to throw out any tools. So I found a way to use both. Okay, all right, so we're moving right along here. The last analysis I did was an element analysis. So you can see we've got the four Western elements here, air, earth, fire, and water. And what I did is I made a, uh, I made a wedge and the size of the wedge indicates how many planets and major asteroids we have in each of the elements at this point for this moon. So we have a lot of planets and asteroids here in air sign and a lot in earth signs and a little bit more in fire plus our moon is in fire and we're not so watery anymore which is a real shift from where we've been in the last few weeks. So then I labeled each quadrant and those of you who've been to this uh, in the last couple of events will recognize this. So the air and water quadrant I labeled inspired feeling, the water and earth quadrant I labeled practical feeling, fire and earth is practical action, and then air and fire is inspired action. So I just took a keyword from each of these events, I mean, each of these elements and then, and then combined it into the quadrant. And we are in the quadrant here of air, of the quadrant of air and earth fire because we have so much air and earth and now we have more fire. So the earth and fire, I labeled this, disruption requires new plans and structures to create security. So we're now on the action side of things, having been on the feeling side of things for a while. So this is great news for all of you who are like, I'm really ready to do something. I'm ready to make an actual change. I'm ready to check out Robin's group coaching program because I'm, I finally wanna get some solutions out of my astrology chart and stop just looking at problems. But because we have our Uranus effect here, you can expect that there's gonna be some changes. And so I'd like to just ask you to think about for a moment, what kind of new plan or structure could you use to shine your light more brightly? Do you need to create a daily habit of posting on social media? Maybe you need to communicate more to people that you care about. Maybe you need to create a habit of um, writing up that new presentation and submitting it to your boss. Like what new action are you gonna take to create that transformation that we were thinking about earlier? And then don't forget to harness the air component and think about what inspires you. What are you really inspired to do? How can you analyze your situation to create a vision for what you want to do? And because it's Mars, you're gonna have to fight for your leading edge light. This is one of these things where you may be inspired to create some sort of way that you're shining your light. That's like not acceptable to everybody around you. Or maybe it's something you've never done before, or maybe, you have some important people in your life who are kind of like, even if they mean well, they're, they're a drag on you a little bit. So whatever that is, be prepared to have to push 
push through obstacles, heal your trauma, you know, decide that these people love you, but they don't get to determine the course of your life, you know, rethink the way you've always thought what they said. This is a really strongly indicated time for change, transformation, and really harnessing your own power as somebody who's able to create the experience that you want to create, which is a lot what we're going to be talking about in the group. So this is the end of my presentation of the astrology of this Leo moon. I'd be happy to answer any questions, and then I'm going to turn it back over to Val, and then we'll get to the ritual portion of things. Anybody have anything they want to ask or is any comments? Is this resonating? There were quite a bit of comments, Robin. So give me a second to try to okay. get back to. Um, we had a comment. I'm not sure where this came in your presentation and that where they said they're learning to step into their power and speak their truth. Um, they're, catching their self, they're catching their self trying to accommodate others. So Ooh, and I resonated yeah. with that as well. Um, it seemed like there was a question Confidence, strength, and being seen is something that someone is working on. And when you went into the um, the, the horoscope, mm -hmm. um, they saw where the next two weeks, um, it's going to push them out of their comfort zone. And so mm, yeah. hopefully they're excited about that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, let's wow. see. A lot of um comments when you were talking about the horoscope portion where they were just being uh, they were just identifying and seeing themselves in that oh, that's great i really have fun doing this but i gotta say it means so much to me for you guys to say that it's helping you that me that means a lot yeah i love writing the horoscopes and i'm always really challenged by mine i'm like oh, okay i can't tell other people to do this and then not do it myself <laughs> okay um, one more comment. Someone's planning on joining a journaling group. Ooh, wonderful. Um, more creativity and it helps her, helps her with groups, 11th house. Wonderful. That's great. I think joining a journaling group is an awesome thing. My, uh, my spirit guides are always like humans are not meant to go it alone. You cannot solve all your problems by yourself, by hiding in a cave and thinking about it and communing with spirit. They're like, you need other people. And I'm like, no, other people are scary. And they're like, other people are great. You just have to find the right people. So totally support you guys in finding your tribe, wherever that is. I do have a comment for you. And this depends on if this individual would like to unmute and share. Mm -hmm. um, because part of they, what they put in the chat was, I'm scared of mine. Um, <laughs> meaning that they were scared of what their horoscope uh, laid out for them, but I'm sure you could give some guidance on that if they want to sure. comment. She's trying to, there uh, we go. Yeah, okay. So I understand what it means, you know, the communicating one-on-one -on -one, and it scares the bejesus out of mind because I, I started a mediumship fundamentals course this week it's only delayed by like three or four years um mm -hmm. with my original uh spiritual mentor and uh, she's like all right well you're ready they're gonna start coming to you this week mm -hmm. uh to communicate with others and so that fits right in with uh my taurus sun sign uh mm -hmm. meeting uh one-on-one -on -one. and that's where the the confidence of uh being able to step into my light and bring it forth that's where you know that scares me to not that i don't have the confidence to be able to do what i know i can do right so, so misha, you said one-on-one -on -one. misha is your sign taurus yeah okay so robin if you have any um help for taurus yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So I just, first, I wanna honor you for being honest about how scared you are. That's like the first step is to just admit that this is your obstacle, is that you're really scared and you don't have the confidence. Have you done some work on maybe like journaling or meditating and writing a list? What scares you about this? Um, no, because like this is a, a newer thing to, you know, I've worked on being con becoming confident with other things. And this is a, I don't know, like a new thing. Like as soon as you okay. get other things, you know, in check, something new shows up. Well, this yeah, is yeah. something new. No, I have not journaled about, okay. uh, about this one and done the work on this one yet. 
are you available for a little bit of coaching, quick coaching on, on this? Yes. Okay. So the first thing to do is there are two things I'd recommend. Um, and we can talk about this more offline if you want to contact me, but, um, but what I'd recommend quickly is doing two things. The first is to just make a list. Now you could write a paragraph and actually journal if you want, or you could just jot down a list of like the top three or four things that scare you. Like, what are you worried is going to happen? What are the people are going to say? Like, what if the spirits come in and I'm not powerful and not whatever that is that's scaring you. And if you, if you have the energy to work through those, that's great. But if you don't, you honestly can just write the list and stick it under your mattress and ask spirit to help you with it. <laughs> but just writing it down on paper, what are the fears that I need to get over? And then the second thing is to go and ask yourself, like you just said something which was great, which is I've become more confident in other areas. So we know you have the ability to become more confident. So ask yourself, what worked for me the last time I had to be more confident in a different area? What was the process that I went through? Did I do a ritual? Did I pray about it? Did I ask for planetary energy help? Did I find a supportive friend to talk to? Did I make a plan? Did I watch a YouTube video? Like, what, was, what is my process for becoming more confident and working through these fears? And then when, when you feel ready, start thinking about how you could apply that proven process to getting over this particular fear and becoming more confident in this area. Because I think you are already somebody who knows how to build your own confidence. So you might as well just leverage that so that you can then become more confident in this area too. What do okay. You uh, no, I think it's a, I think that's a great process and I just need to get over myself basically. And, and, and I mean, seriously, because I'm the one that's blocking my own mm -hmm. gifts or whatever coming through. Um, yeah. So yeah, I basically just need to get over myself. Um, thank you. Thank sure. you. That's a, a good process uh, for me to s start working through. So thank you very much. You're, you're totally welcome. Yeah. And I just um, want to point out I'm so glad we had enough time to sneak that in. If you have never had a reading with Robin, this is what you get when you have a reading with Robin. She doesn't just tell you, oh, you're a Taurus, you need to work on this. She gives you actionable steps to help you work on it. So um, just throwing that out there, giving you, giving you props, Robin, because she's Thank awesome. You. Thank you, Valerie. Yeah, I really, I really appreciate it. This is partly why I wanted to start a group coaching program, because I'm like, we need to get together and talk about, you know, with these actionable steps but this morning I had I said the same thing to spirit because I'm working with a lot of fear and I'm like I hate this I can't really deal with all of this and spirit said to me you are powerful and strong you can survive anything so there's that part of us that's like I'm afraid I can't and spirit is like oh yes you can oh yes you can it's going to be challenging but you have tons of support around you and you can take baby steps if that's what you you need like, like unmuting yourself and actually talking in public about what you need, like props to you. Okay, I'm gonna turn it back over to Valerie. Thank you guys, I appreciate your, your being a wonderful audience. Oh, hearts, okay. Awesome, thank you, Robin. <clears throat> okay. Yes, and Elizabeth just said, and you do it in the most compassionate way possible that speaking to uh, Robin's reading. Okay. Um, so my, now we're going to move into rituals and rituals, meaning how can you pull these energies that are present into your life and make them personal and work with them to help you live a more aligned in the flow life. With that being said, my ritual is very unritualistic. Um, and I am tying astrology back into tarot. I want to get more into that. Um, so this one is involving tarot cards. And as a ritual or as a practice, whether or not you're aware of Tarot or whether you use Tarot, I still think this will work for you as we go through it. And as I just explained the different placements for you, whether or not you have Tarot cards present is not going to be the, the most uh, deciding factor. In other words, what I'm saying is you can do this, you can realize these energies with or without the Tarot cards. However, if you are a Tarotist like myself, 
please pull out these cards. And in a ritual sense, you can pull out these cards and have them sitting out for the portion leading up to the full moon, for the full moon, and for the portion leading away from the full moon. And just meditate with these cards or concentrate on the energies of the cards and see if you get any additional information from reading these cards for yourself. There will be three cards. So it's a very simple three card spread if you think of it in terms of spread. And let me go ahead, y'all, after I wowed you with all the animations in my first uh, presentation, this one is going to be a bit of a letdown because this one was <laughs> this one was put together this morning and I didn't have that much time, but it's still, it's got, it's got strong bones, y'all. Y'all can still understand what I'm saying. All right, let me get the screen share going and present it. Um, and we will start with, if you were to pull cards for the full moon in Leo, you would pull the moon card, duh, and the strength card, because the strength card represents Leo, there is actually a lion on the card, so that should be very easy for you to remember which card is associated with Leo. So the moon card in Tarot talks about trusting your intuition, Facing your fears, we've talked a lot about that recently over in the chat, hidden truths, dreams, and perception. And then the strength card talks about courage, inner strength, leadership, influence, confidence, trust, and gentleness. Now I wanna talk about the trust and gentleness just for a moment, because generally when you think about Leos, those lions, strong and confident, you don't necessarily think gentleness and trust. But if you look at this card in Tarot, you can see the gentleness here in that that fair maiden is so gentle with this lion and the lion is so trusting of her that he's not attacking her because he knows that she means him no harm. And she's able to open that lion's mouth. So in Tarot, for this card, one of the best explanations that I like is that she is looking beyond the facade of this strong, confident Leo. And she's looking within to see what, what builds that confidence. Where does, this conf where does this true sense of inner strength come from? That's why she's opening the mouth to look within this lion, so to speak. And so that involves trust on both parts. She's trusting the lion not to bite her hand off. The lion's trusting her not to do um, him any harm. Um, and gentleness, she has to be gentle as she's dealing with this lion to um, coerce this lion to letting her look within. So the strength card is about that inner strength. It's about finding where this inner strength comes from, the true source of our strength, aside from the strong, confident facade that we might put on. Um, so if you were to have both of these cards together, what additional insight could you gain from looking at the moon and the strength card together if you were reading the cards? If you're not a card reader, what additional insight can you gain just from these keywords? And just as I've described um, the moon and the strength card, I did describe the strength card a little bit more because we've talked about the moon enough, but the strength card is where it's placed in Leo. So you can think of it from that aspect if you are not a card reader. But now kind of like inspired by Robin, but mine is a little bit different. We're going to talk about how this can relate to you based on your rising or sun sign. So your rising sign also gives you a lot of insight into, um, into your chart. Your sun sign is where everyone typically looks. I'm a Sagittarius, but your rising sign also has additional insight. I have Virgo rising. So as we go through this presentation, you might wanna take note of both your sun sign placement and your rising sign placement to get some additional insight on how these energies can help you. So I went with the moon card, the strength card in Leo, and then what this means to you as far as the moon and the moon in Leo is in what house for you? So we're talking about how the, the 12 house system. <clears throat> if you are a Leo, this would of course show up in your first house. And the tarot card for first house is the emperor. So your first house is that house of awareness and self, your self image. And we have the emperor in this house. I'm just gonna pause. I don't want to confuse you, especially if you read Tarot. 
but this is about the moon in Leo and in what house. This is not about assigning a card to your sign, which there are cards for that too. So um, that sounds a little confusing. When I move away from Leo, it'll make more sense. But the moon in Leo in your first house, if you are a Leo rising or sun sign, is the emperor card. So you would read all of these cards together. And the emperor card, I just want to give you a couple of keywords for emperor. The emperor is the divine masculine in the tarot. It's an authority figure, powerful, a natural leader. Sounds a lot like Leo, yes? Um, the emperor is used to taking action. So all of those qualities, in this case, would ex in, um, magnify because the strength card, the strength Leo energy and the emperor energy are very similar. So you have a lot of amplification of that divine masculine energy and it's in your first house of self and self-identification. So that's how that could affect you if you are Leo rising or Leo sun. If you are a tarot reader, go ahead and pull those cards and meditate or see if you personally get any additional information from these cards. Moving on. The next sign in the zodiac after Leo, if we're going in order, would be Libra. So if you're a Libra or sun sign rising, this would take place in your 11th house. That doesn't seem right. That is not right. How did I skip all the way to the end? Let's try that again. Cancer, cancer rising or cancer sun sign. I'm back on track, y'all. <clears throat> this, this full moon in Leo would take place in your second house if you are a cancer. Second house is um, corresponds to the tarot card of the Hierophant. Hierophant is all about examining your beliefs. So with that, some additional keywords for the Hierophants are lessons, spiritual leader, formal education or training, new paradigms, tradition. The Hierophant, it's about figuring out these beliefs that I've carried with me all of my life, where do they come from? Is there some fallacy in any of the beliefs that I hold? Is it time for me to leave some beliefs behind, adapt some new beliefs, adjust my, belief, <clears throat> adjust my beliefs system? So in your second house of resources and material things, these are the energies that you can focus on if you are a Cancer rising or sun sign. Um, let's see. So if I'm Gemini ascending the lovers, uh, Elizabeth, I think so. Let me just keep going. I think so. I haven't memorized them, Elizabeth. We'll see in a minute. <clears throat> No, that's get me ahead. Yeah, I'm gonna get this right, right. Not today. Hold on. Yes. That's where I'm at, right? Gemini, yes, Cancer. Gemini, rising or sun sign. For you, this is going to, this full moon in Leo is going to happen in your third house. Your third house is the house that deals with thoughts and introspection. And the third house in Tarot is represented by the lover's card. Ask yourself how you can use love as an aspect or a quality to pull in the energies of the moon and Leo and how that might affect you in your thought and introspection in your third, in your third house. <clears throat> Taurus, rising or sun sign. Again, we have the full moon in Leo in your fourth house, if you are a Taurus. And fourth house is represented by the chariot. Fourth house deals with family and domesticity. And the chariot is a sign, <clears throat> is a card that represents victory. Victory over, the chariot happens when you are moving out of having controlled all of your life through willpower and you have this sense of victory um, because you've got control over everything in your, health, in, in your life. So this is dealing with family and domesticity. Um, however, the chariot has a longing to let go of that control. 
So the card into row has a longing to reach a level of flow where they don't have to control everything in order to make it work, where they can move away from willpower. That's the meaning of the chariot into row. For you all, take that energy, whatever resonated the most with you as I described the chariot and some of the um, keywords, which are victory, determination, harnessing opposing energies, success, confidence, control, how do those keywords resonate with what you have in your fourth house of family? And how can you pull in the energies of the moon and in Leo into your fourth house as well? I hope I'm not confusing you. That's a lot of energies to concentrate on. If you're able to follow along and pull all of those energies in, it'll benefit you. All right. Ah, did I go right? Yes. Aries, if you are Aries rising or sun sign, the full moon in Leo will happen in your fifth house. Fifth house is the house of creativity and romance and fifth house is represented by strength. So you have a double dose of that Leo strength energy. Um, just to reiterate the key words for the strength card would be inner strength. <clears throat> Inner strength, tenderness, compassion can also talk about animalistic instincts, um, courage, confidence. So you have a double dosing of this strong strength, inner strength energy dealing with your moon. If you are an airy sign, all of this happening in your fifth house of creativity and romance. So look at the house that these energies fall in to see where it would affect you personally in your life most, where it would most affect you. Pisces, if you're a Pisces rising or sun sign, the full moon in Leo is going to happen in your sixth house, which governs routine and being of service. And the sixth house is represented by the hermit. You don't necessarily think of the hermit as being in service. So why would they link the hermit with the sixth house? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you my interpretation why. Because the hermit stands on top of this snow-covered mountain with a staff, with only a staff, and we can see he's elderly, which means, think of an old man standing on top of a snow-covered mountain. He has learned how to balance. Mountains are considered challenges in the Tarot, so he has learned the skill of how to do balance and surmount his challenges with nothing but that stick to keep his balance and he is lighting the way for others. He is showing others the way. He is being of service to others, showing them how they can find that same balance in their life. So take the card of the hermit. Some other key words for the hermit are inner reflection, meditation, finding your inner guidance or your guide within, and taking time out from a chaotic life, hermiting, but also as you find this inner guidance, being willing to hold the light up and show the way for others. So all of these energies happening in your sixth house of routine and service, if you are Piscean. Let me just see, now that we're almost halfway through, if we have any questions, teacher or guide, yes, yes, Elizabeth, agreed. If you are an, if you are an Aquarius, rising or a sun sign, the full moon in Leo is going to take place in your seventh house. Your seventh house is the house dealing with long-term partnerships. And we have the card representing seventh house as justice. And in this sense, I see justice, the, the main attribute as it relates to seventh house as being that of balance. Long-term partnerships need a solid foundation. Solid foundations are built on having balance in areas of your life. Um, so we take the full moon in Leo, put it in your seventh house that deals with long-term relationships. We're asking to pull in that energy of balance to have all of these energies working together. That's if you are Aquarius, rising or sun sign. Capricorn, rising or sun sign. Full moon in Leo is gonna take place in your eighth house. And the eighth house is the house that deals with secrets and transformation. And so of course we have the death card representing the eighth house. So we have full moon in Leo in your eighth house 
dealing with secrets and transformation. If we pull in the additional meaning from the tarot, this card could also mean um, death of ego. It could mean death of ego for you. Um, death and rebirth is one way that we think of it. Um, what do we need to let go of so that we can allow the, the new, the rebirth, rebirth to happen? But I want to point out, for those of you not familiar with the tarot, that underneath this death on a horse is this person that is lying, that is actually dead, so to speak. And you see just a little bit further off is a crown. That's letting you know that this is a king. His crown has fallen off, means that, meaning that is uh, exemplifying the death of ego. Um, his ego, his crown has fallen off. So in the eighth house, dealing with secrets and transformation, some of that transformation might be letting our ego go so that the more true, authentic, letting the harmful aspects of our ego go so that our more true, authentic, loving self can come to the surface so that we can transform. Um, it's also dealing with that shadow work, um, secrets, eighth house, I can see how death would relate because death is one of those taboo topics where we just want to dig in and figure out what is no longer serving us so that we can let it go. So all of that going on, if you are a Capricorn um, for these energies happening during this full moon, hope that makes sense. Sagittarius, rising or sun sign. I have Sagittarius sun sign this full moon in Leo is going to affect your ninth house. And the ninth house is interestingly enough represented by temperance. And temperance also has to be, happens to be the card for Sagittarius. <clears throat> ninth house deals with knowledge and seeking. So it makes sense that temperance would be in this ninth house. Temperance is often referred to as the alchemist. Um, as you see her, mixing um, between those two cups. So think about that energy of alchemy, of knowledge and seeking um, combined with the full moon in Leo in your ninth house. And concentrate on how all of those energies can work together. Scorpio rising or sun sign, full moon in Leo is gonna happen in your 10th house. And the 10th house is all about career and public persona. And the 10th house is represented by the devil. I'll tell you why. Because the devil is all about understanding your shadow side. So the devil in tarot, I like to say, is not necessarily an, a, a bad card because the devil asked you to look at your life and see where you might have some ex excess, see where you might be overly indulgent. See where your temptations are leading you and what is the root of those temptations. Examine those darker things, bring them to the light so that you can find balance and get back into the flow. So all of those energies happening in your 10th house of career or public persona. So how can getting to the bottom of your temptations and your over excess, um, how can finding that balance and also pulling in the moon and the, in Leo, how can all of that benefit you in regards to your career or your public persona. And just a couple more signs. If you are Libra rising or Libra sun sign, full moon in Leo is gonna happen in your 11th house. Did I skip one? No, I got it right. It's gonna happen in your 11th house. Your 11th house is community and rebellion. And here we have the star. Keywords for the star, expectations fulfilled, wishes granted, opportunities, healing after a traumatic event, knowing that you are on the right path, inspiration and renewed hope, all happening regarding community for you. Uh, so pull in the energies of the full moon in Leo and the energy of this star card, some of those opportunities opening up and all of those things and relate them to what's going on regarding you and community. Community or rebellion. Rebellion points to, as you look out, rebelling against the status quo, finding a way to set things right when you look out at the community around you and you see things that aren't 
quite right. It's all related to community. The rebellion only comes in as is that feeling of wanting to upset the status quo so that it, it more closely um, represents what you feel the community should reflect. I hope that makes sense. So all of this is happening in your 11th house if you are a Libra. And finally, if you are Virgo rising or sun sign, I'm Virgo rising. This full moon in Leo happens in your 12th house and the 12th house, guard, um, the 12th house governs hidden desires and dreams. And here we see that the moon is also representative of the 12th house. Of course, because the moon card, also some additional meanings are what lies beneath the surface, your unconscious or subconscious mind. So that lends itself very well, very well to hidden dreams or hidden desires. So in this case, if you are Virgo rising or sun, you are just supercharging that moon supercharging that moon energy. So you have the moon in Leo, but you're gonna feel that moon more uh, predominantly in your 12th house about hidden desires and dreams. So I'm gonna stop the screen share. I hope all of that made sense. Um, how are the houses determined through sun signs? Is it the same as rising? That's the first question I saw. I'm gonna to go to this handy dandy book. Y'all see I've bookmarked it, highly recommend it. It's called Moonology. And she describes, if I can find it, the difference between why you would want to look at your sun sign and your rising sign to get more information on how it might affect you. Give me just a moment and I will find it for you because she has such a cute little short thing. Um, star sign or rising sign. She, um, she always advocates following your rising sign. I will say you can do both, uh, especially since most of you are more familiar with your sun uh -huh. sign. Um, and so with that, let me see. Rising sign will give you a more accurate prediction than just reading your, your sun sign. The information is more like the forecast you'd get if you went to an astrologer for a personal reading. This is because your rising sign is the most personal point in your chart, dictated not just by your date and time of birth, but also by your place of birth. So that's why the rising sign is more personal, um, whereas your sun sign, it's still very accurate information. Uh -huh. I hope that answers your question. I don't know if I quite answered that. Robin is answering more in that. You can input, yes, some information. Did I miss any questions, Robin, about what I presented? I'm seeing a lot in chat. I don't think so. I think it's good. You wanna um, Perfect. repeat what you said? What Are you trying to finish by, by half after here or by five o'clock your time? Uh, five is when the event ends, but if we end before that, I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> so I think I'm not seeing any other questions. I am seeing a lot of comments. So hopefully I didn't confuse you all too much with that presentation. I just really like pulling the tarot in to see if it can give us more additional insight into the signs and the energies. And I am going to turn it over to Robin for her, her portion on rituals. All right. Um, okay. So, uh, all right. I can do my ritual. Um, hey, Ian, Robin. You're, you're welcome. Uh, Ian was asking um, about his rising sign and everything like that. And Ian, if you want to email me, I'll send you a copy of the chart that I pulled based on your birthday and you can take a look at, at that. Okay. I'm going to share my ritual. Thank you, Valerie. That was super cool. Um, so there's a lot going on in the sky, which we didn't talk about yet. So we're going to talk about it now. Oops, that's not what I wanted to look at. That's where we want to be. Okay. So we're going to pull in some of the astrological things into the ritual that I put together today. This is the chart for today's, uh, not today, but the, the full moon coming up on in a few days. And I entitled today's ritual 
Please give me clarity about how I can overcome obstacles to shine. The sun and the moon are great for clarity. So I talk a lot about bringing in planetary energies to help us enjoy our lives and, and leverage our own power. So we're gonna, we're gonna do the sun and the moon today. So I'm gonna quickly go through some of the astrological placements we're gonna use in today's ritual. So this is a really powerful moon because you can see we've got the sun right at the top of the chart here. And then it's opposite the moon. That's what creates a full moon, by the way. It's full because the sun is opposite the moon. So the light of the sun is shining directly on the moon and it illuminates the whole moon. But this is meaningful because this sun and moon are almost exactly 90 degrees from the north and south node. And you can see the north node over here on the left. And then the south node is over here on the right. It's not marked, but it's always opposite the north mode. So you can see how these form a square. And this is a really powerful moment for insight because the nodes dictate the eclipses. And our last uh, eclipse sequence started back in November with the Taurus eclipse. So whatever changes started to happen in your life last November, this is a big like moment of realization, moment of fruition, insight. You suddenly are like, oh, I can see now what my life path is, what my next transformational step is, where I am going forward. The North and South node have a lot to do with like how you grow in this lifetime and where your life path is taking you. So if there's been stuff going on in your life and you're like, what the heck is going on? Why are things falling apart? Why are these changes happening to me? This is a great time to step back and think, all right, can I get some clarity about where I'm headed and how I can overcome the obstacles to that? So in addition to that, we also have Mercury, which just entered Aquarius. Mercury is the symbol here that looks kind of like a Venus, like a female symbol, but it's got the little horns on top. And Mercury as a planet symbolizes communication and information. So I think of the horns as like little antennae on Mercury, like receiving signals and beaming out signals. But you can see it's at one degree Aquarius. So it's just got into Aquarius. And Mercury in Aquarius is very good for like analyzing and understanding the future. The sign of Aquarius is all about making progress and growing. So this is a great time to be thinking and using our brains to analyze our situation and try to understand what the path forward looks like. And then we also have a Mars-Venus conjunction here in Capricorn. So Mars is this thing that looks like the male symbol. Venus is the female symbol. You can see Mars will be at 17 degrees and Venus will be at 16 degrees and 58 minutes. There are only 60 minutes. So that means that there are, these are two minutes apart. They're super close right at the full moon. And they represent um, bringing together opposites. Mars-Venus conjunctions are great times to think about how can you reconcile those two things that seem irreconcilable? Like, can I succeed at work and also have more fun? Can I feel fully fulfilled in my relationships without sacrificing my individuality? This is a great time to work on that. And because it's in Capricorn, it's a great time to make plans. So overall, there's a ton of amazing astrology here really centered around the Let's figure out what we're looking to create. What do we want to create in our lives in the next you know, two weeks or the next rest of this year or whatever, and get some insight on how to make a plan for what to do with that. So just take a moment and think to yourself, what do I really want to create in my life in the next like six months to a year? How do I want things to be different? And feel free to stick something in the chat, whatever occurs to you. I want to be more fun. I want to be more relaxed. I want a job I enjoy. I want to fix my relationship with my spouse so that I actually feel happy to see that person. I want to enjoy my kids. Like Whatever that is for you, stick that in chat if you'd like to put a pin in it and notify the universe that you are on board to make some changes here. All right, overcoming obstacles to the shine. So the ritual today, there's our astrology chart. We're basically gonna recreate this format or this image with our ritual. So step one is to create a circle. And you could draw a circle, you could use a circular dinner plate, you could get a scarf or a piece of cloth that has a circular pattern. Um, you'll see what I did in just a second. I took a necklace and just arranged it in a circle around the edge. Then you're gonna take four crystals or symbols and place them in the north, south, and east, west positions in the circle. Now, I'm a big fan of using what you have. So if you have crystals that, re that represent the moon and the sun, you can. Or if you just have symbols, or maybe you have a piece of jewelry, or maybe you wanna draw symbols on a piece of paper, whatever works 
for you. It's just, you're putting the universe on notice that this is a change you'd like to make in your life. There are no quote unquote official crystals for the North and South node that I know of. So you can just pick anything you want that might have to do with clarity or insight, or honestly, just anything that strikes your fancy. Or maybe you could research that. I, I haven't actually researched that myself. So, all right, so we create your circle, you place your moon and sun and North and South node, crystals or symbols. Then you're gonna place a couple of crystals or symbols for Mars and Venus in the upper right. And then something for Mercury, kind of in the middle. So you see how we're recreating with our, our placements, we're recreating the astrology chart. And this is gonna give us the ability to tap into that energy. And then the last thing I did is to pull a card. It could be a tarot card, an Oracle deck, a rune, you could, um, uh, if you have some symbolic objects, you could just draw a random one out or put a bunch of pieces of jewelry together and pull out something that's meaningful for you. Something in the middle, and this is going to be the thing that spirit or your higher self or your intuition will work from to gain this clarity. Now, in just a second, I'm going to show you my example of, of, of my version of this, but does anybody have any questions that they want to ask at this point? Yes, there was a question. Um, yeah. Um, maybe not. I don't know if that's a statement. There are moon and sun stones. Yes, oh, that was a statement. She's talking about moonstone and sunstone for. Yes, stone. you absolutely can use crystals that are that are for the moon and sun, or you can use anything else that that resonates with you. The main thing you're really trying to do here is build the energies of the moon and sun in your life, because you're the one trying to achieve clarity. So if it works for you to use stones that are officially associated with the moon and sun, that's great. But you can honestly use anything you want as long as the energy resonates with you. And by the way, there's a, on my website, which is spiritsaid.com, I'll give you that URL in a second. On the free resources tab, there is a keyword table that lists some crystals for the moon and the sun and Mars and Mercury, if you want to go check that out. Okay, any other questions? Nope, no other questions. Okay, so how did I put this into practice here? This is what mine looked like. <laughs> and I chose kind of a messy plate because it really is energetically impressed and has a strong energetic impression for me. I like this plate because it has gold, which is associated with the sun, and it has a lot of red, which has to do with Mars, but you could obviously choose anything you wanted to. So if you look at this, you can see, here's what I did. So for the sun, I have a little lion's head brooch, so I chose that because we're looking at Leo energies. And then I have a piece of carnelian, which is a stone associated with the sun. My moonstone at the bottom was a piece of white howlite. And then on the left, I have some citrine here. And on the right, I have clear quartz. That's for the north and south node. And I just picked those because they're associated with like clarity and insight. Around the outside, I have a necklace, which is a combination of clear quartz and pearl. And pearl is often associated with the moon because it's related to water. So that's how I created my circle around the outside. Now this mercury stone, I honestly have no idea what this stone is. It was a present from my six-year-old niece, but it is speckled and mercury as a planet rules anything that's like speckled or multicolored. So I decided that was good enough. And then for my Venus, I have a piece of rose quartz and my Mars, I have a piece of red coral. So you can see it's kind of a hodgepodge of different stones. And then I decided to use a rune from my natural rune deck, which is for sale on my website. I have, these are all runes that I hand painted and then photographed in my local natural environment. So I pulled this rune, which is algaes, which is protection. And this is so ironic because this is a rune that's often associated with spirit guides. And my spirit guides lately have been trying to convince me that they are with me, even if I can't hear them and don't sense them. They're like trying to help me be more comfortable. So when I pulled this, I was like, oh, you guys, I need to have more trust that spirit is with me, even if I can't like sense it in the moment. Anyway, so this was my little ritual. And then what I am doing between now and the full moon is I am taking this and I left it outside on my deck. Now you might notice that I replaced the card, which I have inside with an actual rune, which I don't mind being outside for a few days. And so the reason I placed it outside is that I am letting the energies of the sun, since it's in the sun, and then the moonlight, once the moon finally rises, I'm gonna use this to channel those sun and moon energies 
because I need more clarity about how I can overcome my own obstacles to shining. My fear really has a grip around my heart and I need help figuring out how I'm, I'm gonna overcome those obstacles. So part of what I'm doing, by the way, is I'm now posting every day or every other day inspirational content on social media. So if you guys wanna follow me, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Spirit Said Coaching. And I'm also on Twitter at Spirit Said Coach. So I would love it if you would check that out, follow me, like my content. I really am trying to let my light shine and, and then just deal with a lot of the fear that's coming up as a result. Um, and then obviously you're welcome to email me, Robin at Pool MX, if you have more questions. Ian, if you want me to send you a copy of the chart I pulled for you. And then my website is spiritsaid.com. And if you have questions about the coaching program or you wanna come and check it out, I'll put that link back in the chat and you can let me know. Uh, all right, any questions or thoughts about this? What do you guys think about this as a ritual? And feel free, obviously, to you know tweak it for, for your purposes. Um, comments, Grace said that the pink stone looks like rhodonite. I agree. I Elizabeth totally, did, said I say rose, did I say rose quartz? I think I, think I did, right? I think you guys, no, you guys are totally right. It's rhodonite. <laughs> <laughs> and then Elizabeth just commented that it looks beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm going to be posting this on things. I thought it was beautiful. I like this, this plate because I always think it's beautiful. And then I was like, maybe it's too messy. Maybe I should like photograph it on a less busy plate so that my audience can see it better. And I was like, you know what? The heck with that. I'm just going to put it on a pretty plate that I really like. All right. But anyway, I just want to empower you guys to use the sun and moon energy here. The reason we're working with the sun so much is that the sun rules Leo. This is an incredible clarity moment to set you up for the rest of the year as far as where do you really want to take your life. And that's the end of what I've got. Thank you. Well, we got through that in record time. I don't want to rush y'all off. I want to open it up one last time. And my question to the group today um, is, do you need any additional help for how you can apply these energies to what you are currently dealing with specifically dealing with right now in um, this upcoming full moon because we want to help you integrate these energies into your personal life on a personal level so we're going to give you um, I think we can take about maybe 10 more minutes if anyone has any questions on how we can relate this to you personally um, Robin and I will be glad to answer that what was the card for Capricorn Ian is that question to myself to me okay let me pull that back up because I do not remember off the top of my head. And I did close the presentation. Uh, I want to say Capricorn is, uh, let me not guess. One moment. I'll just mention to people that the rising sign is whatever was on the Eastern horizon at the moment of your birth. And it is hugely influential. So for me, finding out what my rising sign was like explained so many things. So if you want help finding your rising sign, I have a couple of tutorials on my um, uh free resources tab and you, it shows you how to pull up your chart and you can see what your rising sign is. In order to get your rising sign though, you need to know your birth time. And if you don't know your birth time, then, then you need to consult a professional astrologer to help you figure out what your rising time is. Francesca asked me. Um, let me answer Anne's question. Okay. Uh -huh. um, for Capricorn, Anne, the house that it affects for you is going to be your eighth house. And the card represented, or the card that represents the eighth house is death death and rebirth <laughs> so what can you let go of to allow the rebirth to happen all right and then how many objects on the ritual so my ritual had four for the the north it had it had seven crystals um a central card or rune and then it had a circle around the outer edge. So that was a total of nine. Seven crystals plus the circle plus the card or the room. And you obviously could use any other divination that you wanted to. You know, if you have a whole bunch of Chinese fortunes, Chinese fortune cookie fortunes that you've collected in a bag, you could just pull out a random one and see what comes to you. And Elizabeth. Okay. Um, when you um, put your dish outside, 
And you set your intention. Did you do it based off of the center card? Or did you do choose it before you even did anything? You mean what I'm getting out of the ritual myself? Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I did it from the center card. I pulled okay. card and then I was okay. like, what do I need from this? It was one of those moments for me where the card was kind of like confirming what I already had a hunch that it was supposed to be. Okay. So spirit's always trying to get me to be more self-sufficient and not look to spirit to just like rescue me and explain everything to me all the time. And so I think that was kind of a message from them. They were like, you already knew this. You didn't really need to pull a card and ask us. You can trust your own intuition. But occasionally, as you know, it's the exact opposite. And you get a card that's like not at all what you had planned or not at all what you were thinking. So, yeah. So for me, the ritual, the, the crystals and everything like that pulls in the energy of transformation and insight. And then the card is like, okay, where am I steering this? Now that I've gotten all this energetic, you know, um, transformational energy, where am I going to take that? All right, and then Robin, if you could show your screen again, because we have someone asking, where did you place each of the seven things? Okay, yeah, I will totally share my screen. And you guys are welcome, by the way, to take a screenshot of this, if you like. Um, this is where I place them. To take a screenshot of this or email me at Robin at Pool MX and I will uh, send you a copy of the slide if you like. Here we go. Here's where I placed everything. Sun and moon at the top and bottom. So I put the moon, I put the sun up here. See, I'm just mimicking this chart on the right. So I've got the sun at the top, moon at the bottom. And I've got the north node on the left and the south node on the right. I've got my Mars and Venus here at, I guess this is about like two o'clock or 1.30, and then I have the Mercury in between that up here, right at about 12.30. And then I put my card in the middle in the circle around the edge. I'm just, I'm just sort of, this is, this is the equivalent of like flattening out the three-dimensional sky into a two-dimensional map on a plate or a table or, you know, the deck or whatever your hard surface is. We're taking that three-dimensional space and we're creating a two-dimensional map of it to harness the, the energies. Awesome, thank you. Yes. Um, there was a question, I'm not quite sure how it relates to the full moon, but there was a question about animals or totems and how they might show up to um, show up in real life or in visions. I guess I can kind of see that as, as um, signs pointing you and what you might want to work on for this full moon. Yeah. I don't know if that answers your question, but that could definitely be if you're getting some kind of message from seeing these signs or seeing these animals in your dreams or in real life, um, it could be sending you a message on what you what energies you might want to work on during this full moon. Um, I hope that answered your question, Ian. Yeah, I'll just say that that's totally been happening to me. I have been seeing, I mean, we've been living in this house now for like I don't know, I guess it's been like four or five months. And I suddenly have seen four bald eagles in the last week. And I asked, what message do you have for me? And they said, you have every right to soar and your wings are just as strong as mine. Um, which is actually something I post about. I post a lot of the messages I get from animals on my um, Instagram and, and Facebook and things. So yes, that could definitely be a way to be getting messages about overcoming obstacles or how, how you wanna shine your light. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Wow. That's Thank pretty you. prophetic, Ian. The only Thank thing you. I know about owls is that they're bringers of wisdom or signs of wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, I go with a very generic, um, but the fact that it was hooting is interesting to me because it's almost as if it's calling out to you. This is me intuiting what that might mean. It's like letting you know that you have your own wisdom and that maybe you're not aware of it. So now here's wisdom in a tree hooting and calling out to you so that you become aware of your own inner wisdom so that you can tap into that side of you. Yeah. Um, and then you had a coyote chasing a rabbit, um, but you walking forward, stop the chase. On that one, I don't have any interpretation. I find it super interesting though, just because it's so vivid. Um, 
in a nature area at sunset. Sunset. That's interesting too, because it might mean something that's about to pass away because it's sunset. Yeah. It's going down. Did you have I any have a, insight? I do. I have, a, I have a thought about the coyote chasing a rabbit, but me walking forward, stop the chase. Because walking forward is a big part of this Leo energy, right? Leo steps forward, takes leadership, shines their light, shows their charisma. When I think of Leo, I always think of the late comedian Robin Williams, who was not afraid to like put himself forward and be himself in public. And we all we all benefited from his light, you know, as he's shown it. So the thing that came to me, Ian, and thank you for sharing this, by the way, I love when people share visions or the things that they see, um, is to ask yourself if you identify more as the coyote or more as the rabbit and how you felt about that chase. Because I'm thinking that either you are like, the coyote where you feel like you're chasing something and you just can't catch it. Or if you feel like the rabbit where you feel like something is chasing you and you're running from it. And like you walking forward is stopping that cycle so that you can stop either, oh, you're not the rabbit. Okay, maybe you are the coyote then. Or maybe there's something in your life where you're seeing other people chasing each other or other people being afraid. But that if you put yourself forward and start shining your light or harness your charisma or become a leader, you can stop that predatory cycle somehow for yourself or others. The falcon is an interesting thing because the thing about being chased, the thing about the coyote is that the rabbit is terrified while being chased because it knows it's being chased. But birds of prey often don't terrify their prey because they come in so fast that the prey doesn't even have a chance to see them. So I think that's really interesting. You might be, you might be become being asked to be a protector for somebody or something. Awesome. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing. You guys have been so communicative in chat and we love it. We love it when there's interaction, uh, giving us feedback, letting us know what you liked, what didn't resonate so that we can continue to craft these presentations to be more insightful and purposeful to you on a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't feel like you're just coming in and picking up general stuff right. before you can pull this information in and help it benefit you on a personal level. I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to everyone who's listening to the recording. I'm just stopping the recording at this point. Thank you.